This video will show the steps needed to trim a catapult or elastic launch glider, often referred to as an ELG. Making these small models fly properly can be challenging because tiny adjustments may have a significant effect on the flight, especially during the high-speed launch. There are three phases to an ELG flight, launch, transition, and glide. The launch is more like shooting an arrow into the air than an airplane flight. Then, as the glider slows down, it transitions into a slightly nose-down attitude and glides to the floor in a circle. Long flight times are achieved during the glide, not the launch, so we will concentrate on making the airplane glide well first, then work on the launch and transition. Decalage is the angular difference between the wing incidence and the stabilizer incidence. The decalage angle is established when the glider is built. The angle must be zero. If the decalage is not zero, meaning the wing and horizontal stabilizer are not parallel to each other, the glider will never fly properly. To check the decalage, rest the wing where it meets the fuselage on a good straight edge, like the edge of a countertop or desk or even a ruler. View the glider from the side and measure the angle the horizontal stabilizer makes to the straight edge. If these are not parallel to each other, remove either the wing or horizontal stabilizer, sand or shim, and re-glue it to achieve a zero decalage angle. Adjusting the decalage is easy to do if you built the Bass Basic ELG. Use masking tape to hold the wing on the fuselage, at least during testing. Loosen the tape and put a small shim under either the front leading edge or rear trailing edge of the wing to make the decalage angle zero. The center of gravity location is usually shown on the construction plans as a circle divided into quarters with opposite sections shaded or given in the building instructions. If not, start by getting the glider to balance in the center of the wing cord. Use modeling clay, usually applied to the nose of the glider, to balance the glider like a seesaw on two points, such as the tips of an open pair of scissors or needle nose pliers. To test the glider prior to its first real flight, hold the glider by the fuselage under the wing. Give a gentle push aiming at a spot on the floor about 20 feet away. The speed of the launch should be just a little faster than walking speed. Launch the glider by bending your elbow, not flicking your wrist. If the nose of the glider lifts and drops and lifts and drops, the glider is stalling because it is tail heavy. Add a pea-sized piece of clay to the nose. Continue test gliding and adding weight until the glider stops stalling. If the nose drops and the glider dives, the glider is nose heavy. Remove a small piece of clay, about half the size of a pea, from the nose. Continue test gliding and removing weight until the glider stops diving. Fine adjustments to the center of gravity can be made by pushing the clay on the nose a bit forward or aft. In extremely rare occasions, weight might be needed on the tail of the glider. Before adding weight to the tail, verify the wing is the correct distance from the nose of the glider. To get the glider to fly in a circle, the horizontal stabilizer needs to be tilted when viewing the glider from the front or rear. This amount of tilt should be shown on the construction plans. If not, Make one side one quarter inch higher than the other. If the right tip of the stabilizer, when viewed from the rear, is raised, the glider should turn right, while raising the left tip should make the glider turn left. As a last resort, a small piece of clay can be added to the tip of the wing on the inside of the circle as well. If you are flying in a basketball sized gym, you want the glide circle to be 20 to 30 feet in diameter. Be sure your glider will turn within the available area.